Hey everybody, in the last video I walked you guys through how to package a finalized InDesign document. Um, it's a really great practice to do when you've maneuvered really far into a project and maybe your elements are scattered all across your computer or near the end of your project when it's time to sort of collect everything either for um, formatting or maybe you need to archive it or send it off to somebody just to get some help. In this video though, we're going to be going over printing presets and uh, how similar they are to the PDF presets and how they can sort of save your life in a pinch. Um, so print presets, you can find them under file, uh, you can go to uh, print, and in this dialog box, this is where you'll go to set up all of your printing uh, sort of um, settings. I have a home printer that I'm going to hook up to here uh, and basically you can tell um, my home printer it's a standard eight and a half by eleven sort of uh, printer um, but unfortunately it doesn't really like to cooperate very well so I'm gonna do my best at explaining some of these options here um, similar to PDFs you can tell it to print all pages a range of pages or maybe just the current page that you are on uh, you could try and tell it to print spreads if your printer is sophisticated enough uh, you could also tell it to print master pages if you really want to see those as well um, and same with visible and printable layers uh, you could tell it to print all layers so even things that are hidden um, sometimes that might be useful if you need to see it uh, under setup um, I'm just going to go and find our US letter, which for some reason is not is not showing up here, which is lovely. Oh, letter. There we go. See, my printer is just wonderful. Um, I do not need to scale to fit. I can just leave everything at the right proportions. Uh, I would generally like things to be centered, especially if you're going to be double siding things. Um, you need to make sure that your pages are perfectly centered. If you're printing on a larger printer that's capable of handling things like tabloid oversized, like a Xerox, uh, you could do all of your printer marks um, like we've done for the PDF. Uh, you don't ever need to worry about including the slug area, but you definitely want to make sure you're using your document bleed settings. Now, under output, um, here you have uh, different ways of managing color. Because we worked in this document in RGB, it wants to use composite RGB, and it will do the color conversion into CMYK. Um, flip, you don't need to worry about screening. We're not using a screen printer, so not really a big deal. Um, graphics. Yeah, you could deal with subsampling and uh, compression and things like that, but it's not necessary. Um, fonts, uh, it downloaded the fonts into this document, so they're embedded in it. Nothing to worry about there. If you were missing fonts, um, they would turn into glyphs or they wouldn't be, uh, they just wouldn't be printed. That was a big deal back, you know, maybe se uh, six years to ten years ago when computers were still um, sort of catching up to that sort of idea. And now down in here, color management. Um, this is sort of important to understand uh, because it is telling you what type of profile it's going to be using when converting your colors from RGB to CMYK. And in here, you can see all of the different profiles um, that printers have. Uh, your printer that you guys end up working with when you're at agencies or um, just on real world application projects, they might tell you what specific uh, profile to choose from. They might have their own profile to choose from. They'll let you know. So for now though, just leave it as the base um, settings. You don't really have to worry about anything in advanced. And summary is again just a recap of everything that our settings are set to. If you do find that you have a very complex print job or a color profile from a printer that you have to use, you could create a save preset. Um, and let's, we could just call this custom, sorry, wait, we can just call this example uh, print preset. And we could hit okay. And then you'll notice that similar to the, uh, similar to the, um, PDF preset we created, it creates this preset down in this menu here, and that's really useful if you have a complicated setup that you have to return to over and over again. Um, I have a couple of other complicated setups that I can uh, walk you guys through later on, uh, but for now, um, I'm just going to hit cancel because I don't actually need to send this to my printer, but that is how you handle setting up a print preset. 
I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.